We've got three um, practitioners who would love to share things with you today. We've got Eve Shepherd, Shepherd from Oldham College, and we've got, see, I, I know where you're from, Eve, but look at me reading. I'm like, I'm still reading. I'm like, Eve Shepherd from Oldham College, Sarah Robert Shaw from Shipley, <laughs> Laurie Lawrence from Islington ACL. I'm still reading it, even though I know where you're all from. Um, <laughs> So we've got three fantastic practitioners that are going to share some great things with us today. And I think the best way to do this and the fairest way, but we could have like got been really fancy and got a visualizer out and flipped a coin or a dice and all that kind of business. But you know what? We'll just go with alphabetical order. If that's all right, that's all right with you, Eve, because that means you're going first. So we're going to go Eve, Laurie, Sarah, Sarah, and you've got 10 to 15 minutes each. And then we'll have maybe 10 minutes at the end for any questions. Is that a great idea? So if anyone does have any questions in the middle of people presenting, just pop them into chat, okay? Um, and, then, and then it just means we're not disturbing the flow and then the last person doesn't end up with a truncated amount of time. We'll do it that way, all right? Okay, are you ready to rock and roll, Eve? I right. am, yeah. Go ahead, what are you sharing with us today? Right, so I am going to share my favourite EdTech tool, and I hope that doesn't switch everyone off immediately because I know we've been overwhelmed by EdTech this year. Um, but what I'm going to share with you is something called Book Widgets, which I never hear mentioned anywhere, <laughs> um, but I absolutely love. And it's the only EdTech tool where after I finished my free trial, I was like, I'm, I'm totally ready to pay for this. <laughs> um, fortunately, my college did. And as I will share with you, it's not extortionate, but you do get a 30 day free trial. So I'm going to share my screen with you. I've made a little wakelet, um, which I will also share with you um, and just talk you through what it is. And then hopefully we'll have time to look at an example um, and then I'll share my wakelet with you. So. Uh, let me get onto the wakelet. Okay. So, um, this is my wakelet, why I love book widgets. Hopefully everyone can see this. I'm not very used to Zoom. I'm a Google Meet person. Um, so I've started off by making a little gif because that's one of my other favorite things this year. Um, so book widgets is a resource creation tool. And I have been looking for this for a long, long time in my ESOL career, not just in lockdown, looking for something where online I can create matching activities, gap fill activities, speaking and listening activities um, for learners to do. So there's loads of stuff you can do with it. And it, essentially it's resource creation. And in lockdown, it's enabled me to reproduce things that I would normally do in the classroom on paper, with cut up little bits of cardboard and all the rest of the stuff we usually use in our ESOL classrooms. So, um, I discovered book widgets whilst Googling, trying to find a tool to create a reading comprehension where the text would be on one side and questions on the other side. So you could very easily look between the text and the questions. That's what I was looking for. And that's how I came across it. So that was the first thing I did with it but it doesn't just do reading comprehension questions. It doesn't just do multiple choice. Um, I could put in matching activities, gap fill, error correction. Um, you can highlight keywords. You can use it for a speaking activity. You can upload a picture and get um, students to label the picture. And it's really easy to share. So um, as I mentioned, I'm from a Google college. So it integrates into Google Classroom. If anybody here uses Google Classroom, it is brilliant because when you click share, the default option is it automatically exports the resource into your Google Classroom. And then when it's marked, it automatically imports the marks into your Google Classroom. So it's just seamless. But if you don't do Google, um, you can also share it via email Students don't need to log on to use the resource. They just go in and do it. And then it sends you an email with their answers. So it's, it, it works via email as well. It does automatic marking, but not just for multiple choice, which is like Google Forms is what I was using as well. But there, unless it's a multiple choice, the automatic marking is pretty dodgy because if they misuse a capital letter or kind of word the answer slightly differently, then it gets marked as incorrect. Whereas on book widgets, it's a lot smarter with the automatic marking. So it can mark open questions, say on a reading 
comprehension if your question was something like um, how do people celebrate you could say well as long as they include the word firework and lamp then it's going to give them a mark and um, so it's got a bit more of a flexible automatic marking but you can go in and override that manually as well if it hasn't got it right so that's why i like book widgets so um the advantages for me are that it's got loads of options there's lots of customization it can mark automatically or manually you can um, put in audio there's lots of different things that you can change and customize it's easy to share easy to mark it's got a free 30-day trial but by some hiccup mine lasted for 60 days and i don't know why but you know worth a try um, and then by the time it ran out, I was hooked um, and was quite happy to pay. Um, the cons, I'm going to say not as considerations, um, is that because it's got so many options and so much customization, it's not as straightforward as some of the other EdTech platforms. So when you're setting it up, um, there's quite a complex set of things. So you, you can just type in a question and put in some multiple choice options and that's pretty simple. But there are lots of other options for how you want it to be marked, whether you want to include audio, do you want to include a hint? How do you want it to be marked in terms of how many points per questions? Does it take points off for wrong answers? All sorts of different options. So there's quite a lot on the page when you're setting it up. Um, and then obviously the other con is, as Rachel says, we all love free stuff and it is not entirely free. It's 49 euros for a year. Um, so for me, that's quite a reasonable price. Um, and I was lucky that my organisation was happy to pay that. Um, but if you take away nothing else from today, I'm going to share some of the stuff I've made and you can use those for free. Um, if all you need to do is open a free account and you'll be able to use my resources. So if you like any of them, um, you can at least use those. So that is it. So I thought what I would do is share a link to a book widget with you um, and you can pretend that you're students and just give it a go, have a look at it so you can see what it is and what it looks like. Um, so I'm going to try and unshare now if I can figure that one out. Oh, here we are. And then tap into the chat. Here is a link. Um, I can also put it up on the screen as a QR code if anyone wants to try it on their phone. So let me just share screen again. Um, okay. And there's the QR code. I hope that's usable there. So give it a try. And feel free to put your mics on and, and shout out if you have any comments or questions. If you're on your phone, you'll be able to see the text and not the questions. You have to tap on the little eye in the circle to see the questions and flip backwards and forwards. If you're on a laptop, hope you'll see text and questions side by side. And it's all gone very quiet. So please do put your mics on and let me know if there's any issue or if you're happy just doing it, then just get on. I just realized I wasn't, I, I wasn't being quiet. It's just, I was on mute. I, there was a lot of like, oh, cool. Okay. And I recognize that page. And, <laughs> <laughs> I was just having a go, you know, the matching. At first I was like, I couldn't figure out how to do it, but it's like a drop, yeah. drop isn't it? That's one of the less intuitive ones, I think, but I popped it on just so you can see the variety of different question types. It's just a demo one, really, to I tried to put lots of different things on. Oh, yeah, I can see, yeah. Loads of different, oh, there's loads of different kind of questions you can ask. I can see how you could, uh, I see why you like this. So do you get a, uh, oh no, I'm being naughty and asking questions. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm keeping my question for later. <laughs> <laughs> I think the restriction really is just the paywall, uh, which is unfortunate. Yes. Um, yes. Really, really unfortunate. But it, yes, it's, it looks quite exciting. Yeah. Lots can be done with it. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I am with you. I'm usually the last person to pay for something. But as I said, I've actually I've been trying to use online resources with my ESOL students for years and years and never found anything that did all the things that I wanted it to do in terms of the activities I wanted to be able to create. Um, mm. Putting the words in order, putting sentences in order. Um, yes. And, and for me, that was that was worth it. But as I said, I, I did end up with 60 days for free, which is what got me hooked in in the first place. Um, and it's definitely worth having a play with a free trial, because even after your trial expires, you can still use any resources that you've created in those 30 days. Mm. Um, so they're still available to you. Right, I'm trying to find the page where it shows you all the things you can do. Give me a shout when you're finished anyway, I'll, I'll let you another couple of minutes. Have you used WordWall at all? Yes, I have, yes. And this is far more in depth, right? Yeah, it just does a lot more things. Um, and you can combine those things into one activity, like in this reading where I've got matching and highlighting and things, it's sort of all flows together as one activity. So I've mostly used it for kind of homework, but I have used it live in lessons as well. And there is a live tab where I can actually see my students live filling in the worksheet during a lesson. Um, they're linked into book widgets through their Google Classroom account. So I can actually sort of see what they're all doing live. I don't know how that would work. Before. And have you found that it works well across devices? Um, what I've often found is these drag and drop activities, for example, don't work very well on mobile phones, on smartphones, because um, it kind of overlaps with the moving of the finger on the mm -hmm. screen. Yes. Have you tried it on other devices? Have you yeah, ever... well, my students have more than I have. <laughs> um, yes. But yes, I've, I've had several students this year who didn't have laptops. They, their only device was their phone and they've mm -hmm. pretty, all, all been able to do this. I kind of yeah. judge these things on how quickly and how many of the students actually send me their homework and this is one of the things that gets most completed if I set it as a mm. homework and um, so it seems that it's quite accessible and they quite like it because they can get instant feedback and mm -hmm. um, if the automatic marking is on and um, so yeah they, it, it tends to I've, I've tried it on my own mobile phone and it's it worked for me and um, obviously there's lots of different types of phones so there's mm. always this issue whether it's compatible everywhere yes Rachel I love it. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> Simple. <laughs> it, it does, it's, there's not that many things that make me go quiet. And I was very quiet when I was doing it. <laughs> enjoying it. <laughs> so I have, thank you so much, Eve. I absolutely love it. You're very, very welcome. So uh, are people back in the Zoom now? I'm still sharing my screen and I just wanted to show you the variety of stuff that's in book widgets. Um, so if you're in the Zoom call or if you come back in now, um, on the screen, you can see the sort of home page for creating a widget, as they call it. So what you've just been doing is the worksheet. Um, and you might have noticed the last question on the worksheet was audio. So um, the students could press record and record their speaking for their answer. Mm. And I've made entirely spoken worksheets where there's no text at all. And they just click play to hear me ans asking a question and then press record to record their answer. So I've put one of those on the wakelet. Um, so there's an excellent slip. So I've used that live in lessons, which gives you two questions. One of them, they can click like a smiley face, a sad face or a medium face. So one of them's kind of an overall, how was today's lesson? And then the other question can be a kind of summary question of the lesson. So like I did one for fractions and it was like, can you tell me an example of a fraction was the exit ticket question. So they sort of gave themselves a smiley face and a question. Yes, Chloe, did you have a question? I just say in just a few more moments, even. Okay, gonna... cool. Yeah, all right. Um, so very briefly, the flashcards, a double-sided flashcard, so they can see one side and then flip it over to see the answer. Um, the quiz, I think, is similar to the worksheet. And then there's all these games you can set up as well, jigsaws, matching, memory games, um, word searches and imagey things that you can do, um, hotspot images where they can click and find information about things on the image. There's math stuff and you can embed 
um, lots of other things. So, um, so yeah, I will stop there and just share this um, wakelet with you. And that has got some example resources that I've made on and a link to the site and a link to some tutorials. Very quick question, even I'm sorry if it's asked before because I was so concentrating on that. Um, how long did that take you to put together the Diwali one? Uh, oh, not very long. Not very long. Um, once I'd figured it out. So um, I had the PDF obviously is from the Skills for Life materials. Um, you upload the PDF and then you just click add question and choose your question type and type it in. But as I say, it, the, the back end of it is probably a little bit more in it than there is in some of the other. OK, there's so many different options, but you can do it quite simply. Super. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you so, so much, Eve. Um, oh, I just want to get stuck in with that now, but I'm not going to get stuck on with it now because I want to listen to what Laurie is going to share. OK, oh. so we've got Laurie from uh, Islington ACL. What are you sharing with us today? Um, the resource that we developed for the Essential Digital Skills Research Project, Action Research Project, um, I, I hope I don't bore you, <laughs> but um, we we at ACL have a very disparate uh, cohort of learners, all based in the community. Uh, uh, the generally the type of learners that wouldn't really be um, very long on traditional college courses because their their pace of learning is much slower for a variety of reasons and so at ACL we tend to have them for quite a long time and it's uh, we're finding especially since lockdown we we're all slapped in the face with how are we going to get the learners to access their courses uh, when they've got very low digital skills so we joined the uh, research project, the action research project, and really it was a work in progress. We were developing it as we went along in response to learner needs. Let me stop talking and share what we ended up devising. Um, I come from a, can everyone see my screen? Yeah, great. I come from a television production background, so I've got a little bit more understanding of PowerPoint in comparison to my colleagues only because I started off in uh, graphic design, etc. So I came with these skills and thought I'd lend them to the project. And we ended up producing a, a growing kind of interactive resource that we could uh, use with the learners uh, across many levels from pre-entry to about entry three. And um, it just needed to be a, a flexible resource because there was a lot of going backwards and forwards to consolidate uh, learning as we went through the units. So essentially, we ended up with a project that covered the, the, the three main areas, devices, apps, uh, and the internet generally. Um, and for each one, there were subtopics um, that we could jump backwards and forwards to as the learners requested alongside a set of questions multi-choice questions come on multi I've got to jump into the wrong bit as well as a set of multi-choice questions which we'll go through so we started off with info generally getting them through things like using keyboards um, these are all supplemented with um, uh, worksheets that were sent either by email or on the Moodle uh, page that we have. So learners could uh, then do some asynchronous learning um, and review the topics. Um, so there we go. Within the topic of info, we've generally got things like using Chromebooks, completely different experience for many learners, as opposed to using a laptop or a phone, keyboard skills, um, digital skills and self-study, uh, even how to take a photograph of, of their work, uh, any handwritten work to hand in. Uh, within the device unit, we had subtopics such as operating systems, what are they, how to use them. I think I particularly like this one, yeah. 
So lots of gifts, introducing lots of gifts, breaking up the text so it could be accessible to both the lower level learners in terms of essential target language and uh, higher level learners uh, that really wanted to you know, see the, the structure of sentences as well as the actual target language in terms of digital skills operating systems, breaking it down for them, things that they didn't understand before, that there are actually two different types, three different types of operating systems really on the market. And trying to give them analogies all the time, it's all cheese on toast, but it's just how it's cooked. Um, as to whether <laughs> you're using a gas cooker, electric cooker or a sandwich maker. Um, it's really trying to make a really visual and you're talking, Chloe, could you please do your mic? I think that was going to be a nice comment. Oh, Laurie, that was it. I love it. I, I'm all about metaphors, Laurie. So when you just yeah. said that about cheese on toast, I was like, that is a spot on metaphor for explaining that. I love it. Thank you. That's how you cook it, right? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, we, we found learners were coming away with the, the idea of embedded itself, really. So, yeah, they speak about Android as cheese on toast. Yeah but a different way yes um what else can i tell you about this this just grew and grew and grew it grew from a straight linear powerpoint presentation uh, and we were definitely trying to avoid death by powerpoint into something that was interactive learner-led um and it took them through everything really that they needed all the digital bits we were using to support teaching and learning emails whatsapp zoom um the color cord the color schemes sort of helped to embed the idea that right this is the app's color everything on this is an app everything on this light orange is an app and they started to be able to separate uh the ideas uh, and, and and get what we were trying to share with them really in, uh, in terms of developing their learning there you go when we went onto the internet we covered things like you know what's the difference between the net and the web um a big small thing i think um but it does help uh, one of the learners fed back that uh, it helps them understand um what their shopkeeper was talking to them about when they went in to get their device fixed um so just letting them know the difference between the net, that their device, once it's connected, it's now online. There are also a set of smaller computers called web servers that have things like education, videos, your photos, your links to chat to other people, news, uh, games, music, information. These are all web pages and websites. And through your browser, you can usually type www and then that's where you go it goes somewhere around the world to a web server to pick up the information you need and bring it back to your device and i think the whole sort of visual thing works for the learner works for the learners um and we've really had good feedback and uh noted uh, comments of increased confidence really from the learners. So I think it was a very interesting project um, that's given us lots of ideas. And we are now deconstructing this to turn it into an app, um, turn sections of it into an app and uh, turn other sections of it into um, uh, a spoken videos on Moodle that the learners can self access and uh, teaching units for staff. There you go. So we also for each unit, there's a set of simple um, A or B selection answers. What are, what are digital skills? We broke them up into four visual questions with an A or B answer. What are digital skills? Absolutely not. Uh, what's keyboard? Uh, it, it's not trying to teach IT as much as just ensuring the learners have a fun understanding of, of the target language. And this was very much for ESOL learners. Yeah, getting them to look at their keyboards, feeding back. And there was a whole series of 
questions for each unit device questions, app questions, Zoom questions, WhatsApp questions, um, just to consolidate uh, learning. Um, I don't know what feedback was, Chloe, from the others, because we shared this on, on a wakelet, am I right? Yes, we did. We did share it on a wakelet, but you're going to be presenting again at the, um, the big OTLA event on the 9th of July. That's right. I keep, I keep thinking 7th, but it's not. It's a Friday. Why, why am I getting 7th from? Um, on the 9th of July. Um, so you'll have lots of feedback from folks there. But just looking at the chat, look at this feedback. This is the best thing I've seen since cheese on toast. Rich cheese on toast. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Eve is loving it. Next level PowerPoint. It really is. There's so many things. Like, I, I really like PowerPoint. I know people talk about death like PowerPoint and all of that, but there's so many things you can do with it. And you have just shown right there. Look at that. That is just uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really glad, Chloe, that Laurel said that she'd got some experience because she was starting to make me feel, oh my gosh, <laughs> I'll never be able to do this. This is absolutely fun. Oh, you can. Oh, you can. I'm, I'm absolutely gobsmacked. This is fantastic. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, with PowerPoint, it's just having the time, I think, for all of us to delve a little bit deeper with PowerPoint. It is a fantastic program and it's very underrated. Um, we just don't have the time really to commit, but it's, yeah, from uh, your infographics to, you know, animated um, materials, I think PowerPoint is really where it's at. It's just not very sharer friendly, it's just not very net friendly. Yeah, you end up with huge files that uh, aren't easy to host. Um, but uh, it is an absolutely amazing program we have in our hands. Thank you so much, Laurie. Um, Sarah Ooh. just popped something in there. Please do a session on how to create these PowerPoints. We, you and I need to have a little chat after this. Laurie. No worries. I've been doing some with uh, internal CPD at ACL. So yeah, I've got materials already. Mm -hmm fantastic thank you so thank much. you i'm going to stop all sharing right. thank you everyone thank, thank you very you. kind oh, all righty oh thank look at that you got to use some reactions thank you very very much we need to do like a thunderclap of everyone at the end of this um all righty so sarah sarah from sarah robertshaw from um shipley college what are you going to share with us today oh mine's super naff compared to those <laughs> So um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what I did in a class over Christmas. I hope you can see that. So my name is Sarah. I work at Shipley College and we are based in Yorkshire in Bradford, as you can probably tell by my accent. Um, and that's my details with blog and Twitter and things. So feel free to to follow uh, my blog, which I really must update. I'm super hopeless at posting on there. Um, I'll, I'll put those up again at the end if people want to follow and things. So, um, so yeah, I am going to talk about the great, British, great ESOL Bake Off that um, I did over Christmas at time. It was just a, a lesson that I did. I work in the community. I teach community sessions, I should say, but I've been fully teaching online. I'm a full time ESOL tutor and I coordinate our provision as well at college. Um, so I've been predominantly teaching entry two and three uh, this year. So this was a class that I did with a couple of entry two courses. Um, and we did some baking together, um, which was lovely. Um, and I just wanted to do something fun. We were in the middle of lockdown, I think, or restrictions. We were, Bradford's been in or was in tier whatever, three, four, whatever it was for so long. Uh, I don't think I think we barely got out of it. I think we were out of it maybe sort of August time a little bit. Um, and I think we were all just feeling a bit, oh, I can't take any more screen time and all that kind of stuff going on. So I just wanted to have some fun with the class. Um, didn't want it to be a heavily structured kind of session, you know, OTLA kind of session. I just wanted to do something nice together. And I thought it'd be a nice opportunity to um, just teach something different. I'm not a chef or a baker or anything like that. I do have a degree in home economics, but it's very, very old. Um, so I'm probably well out of date. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to do something nice with them. I, I thought also they'd, they'd, we'd be doing some work with imperatives and things like that. So it'd be nice to be able to follow instructions. 
and of course produce something delicious at the end which I, I chose a recipe of gingerbread men because it was Christmas time um, thought that might be quite festive to do and also something that the students could all access a recipe that they could access I did ask the students um, first whether you know got their consent whether they wanted to do it or not because I wasn't sure really how they would feel about it but they were super keen there was a one I think I've got I've got three groups one group wasn't so keen but the two that were I did it I did it with those we had some real merry berries in there um, which is interesting so what I did was um I put I made uh, like a online digital I guess um shopping list for them um, so that they could go and get the shopping bits and pieces before the session. So I used a Google Doc for this um, and, and pop, popped it on there. And I used the Snippy tool. Um, if, if you're not sure about that, I I've, I've can tell you about that in a second. Um, to get those images from various uh, websites and things. May have done some stealing there. Um, and then they knew what they were getting. Um, as I said, I wanted to make the uh, session, the, the recipe, sorry, really inclusive so that everybody could have a go at it. So I was looking for a recipe that um, they could all access the ingredients and the equipment and things that were needed because I'm aware that some of my students don't go to big supermarkets. It's like kind of local corner shops or little stores and things. So I just wanted to make sure they could get hold of everything. Um, so I did put on an equipment list as well for them on the Google Doc so that they knew what they needed. Um, and I had in my mind that they didn't necessarily need, for example, the cutter. We could still, you know, use, I don't know, a jar, a jar lid, whatever, and cut around it to make shapes and things like that. They didn't need a baking tray. They could, I think some of them, I've got some photos to show you. Some of them used um, grill pans and things like that, which it's fine, it all worked. Um, so yeah, as, as I said, I put, I put them on Google Documents and there was a little bit of an issue. There were lots of things that happened that I've reflected on, which I'll talk about with this, because I think for me, that's where I learn the most when things go a bit haywire. But it was a lovely, um, very active and chaotic class, but I like my classes like that. I like them busy and noisy and, and things like that. So it was, it was lots of fun. Um, so yeah, as I said, I put those images using the Snippy tool, which is available on all, if, you, if you're not aware, it's available on all Windows um, machines program. Um, and just, it's, you can usually find it in the bottom left corner with the little search icon. If you just type it in, it comes up and it's fabulous for just taking images from anywhere you need, really. Um, it's a bit like a copy and paste kind of tool. And that's what it looks like. Um, so yeah, that's what I used with that one. So what we did was we did it live from our kitchens, which was nice to be in a different environment. Um, and um, we, what I initially did was I had a PowerPoint with the recipe on step-by-step -step instructions, so different slides. That all went to complete pot because <laughs> um, it was so chaotic. There were students that arrived late, as, you, as we all do in classes, we have students that turn up late. So there were people at different stages. There were people that thought they knew the recipe. So they were trying to assist other people incorrectly. There was all sorts of stuff going on. So I did abandon that midway through and just did it verbally and was just able to kind of watch what everybody was doing on Zoom and just try and check in with them and things. Um, and as the, so we just did it step by step together, the best we could together. And then at the end, they did a taste test. So they tasted their bakes and decided and had a look at everybody else's and decided what they thought about them. Um, so my reflections on it, because I said it wasn't a perfect session at all. Is there ever such a thing? Um, was with the Google Doc that I sent out with the, the online recipe. Um, and things on there. Some of them at that point weren't aware to scroll down. So there was two pages, so they missed some of it. Some of them, uh, sorry, I sent it on the Google, Do Google Doc via uh, a link uh, in WhatsApp. We're lucky enough to use WhatsApp with the students. So they were all able to um, pick it up from there. Some of them lost their links in WhatsApp because they do struggle with threads and things like that. Um, so some of them just were kind of, what do I need? Getting grabbing things out of cupboards and things like that. So, um, so there's things that I've changed. I've been fortunate enough to be given another baking course in the next couple of weeks. I'm doing, I'm running the couple of sessions, um, and um, I've, I've tweaked it a little bit, which I'll tell you about how I've changed it. 
Um, yeah, as I said, I wanted it to be really inclusive, so um, to make sure that they could all access the ingredients from wherever they were shopping shopping from but and also the equipment one thing that I really didn't um anticipate was a lot of people didn't have weighing scales which really flipped my session upside down so I had to do a lot of improvising with how many cups of flour and sugar and things they might need um, as I said I'm no baker so we had some interesting products at the end but not their fault that's totally my fault um and I'm glad actually that I ditched the slides as I was going through because it just made it more hands-on um, it, they were kind of struggling a little bit to do their whatever they were doing, mixing their eggs or whatever, and then looking at their phone to see, you know, what's going on. Um, so I've actually changed that um, for the next courses that I'm going to do. But I'll tell you about that in a second. And this is what they made. They all sent me photos of what they made, um, which was fantastic. And what was so nice about the classes, well, there were many lovely elements about it, but... Um, one particular lady I remember had uh, her daughter there in the background and when she was getting them out of the oven her daughter was saying oh wow mummy and clapping which was just like this is why I do this job and um, somebody else who had never baked before well I had a couple of people that had never ever baked before um, I, I was speaking to them the, the following week after the session and he was telling me that he'd done some baking with his children at home at the weekend so which was just amazing I think it gave them a little bit of confidence to to do it um it was quite interesting the courses that I taught with because one course was really chaotic and busy and, and the other course was very studious and they wanted to get everything exactly right so some of them were not very happy with how their bakes were looking and things at the end but it was, it was quite interesting to compare those courses but yeah as, as you can see there's a few on there that, that you know we could we could do a little bit more with on there and there's some excellent bakes on there as well but um they all tried the best and they were fantastic and they were they were really surprised at the taste I'm not really sure what they were expecting but a lot of them were ooh, when they tasted it and things so yeah that went really well so moving forward for me in the next couple of weeks um, when I'm doing these courses, as I said, I've changed things. I've ditched the PowerPoint and I've made a written set of instructions with the, still with the images. And I, I'm, I'm really lucky that my college are able to post things out to my students. So I'm going to get those sent out before the session so they can have a look through. And I've put some tasks in for them to just identify particular words and things like that. And so they've got that time to process. Um, and I've also made, I've been spending my weekends baking, I've made little videos of each stage um, so that they can see, because one of the things that was um, really difficult was I was trying to hold things up to camera so that they couldn't actually see, you know, like on a cookery programme, they cut to sort of looking inside the bowl or whatever, they couldn't really see it. So I've actually made uh, videos to show those stages now. Um, and I've put those videos, I've got a YouTube account, so I've put it on there. Um, which means that I can send them links if they want. Um, we can, there's, there'll be choices for them available, how, how they want to look at those. I'll be playing them in the session and I can repeat them as well. And, and again, if anybody arrives late to the session, um, we can go back over things quite easily. And if people want to uh, get further ahead, I can send the links out to them. I can send the links to the videos after the session if they're wanting to try again. Um, so fingers crossed, that'll be, I'll let you know how that goes. Um, and I've also added in a taste test uh, to show you this one. So this is a Google form. So what we're going to do at the end of each session, hope you can see there, is they can score their own bakes and see how they feel about them at the end to evaluate a little bit. Uh, and I'll get the, re the results will come to me so I'll be able to see how they're feeling about it. So you could also... Um, I did sort of play with this idea of using a Mentimeter for um, having a vote for what recipe they'd like to teach the, the following week. My students do struggle quite a lot with Mentimeter, um, but that's something you could do, have a class vote, what they want to bake next. I've also been thinking about maybe in the final week, I might possibly set a challenge out if anybody would like to teach us how to make you know a dish if there's a particular traditional dish or anything like that we could do something like that um it's a really good session to use for maths if you are teaching functional skills entry maths it does fit well with that curriculum um weights and measures i think uh, a lot's covered through that 
So yeah, so that's that's what I did with my class over Christmas, and I'm really glad that I'm able to teach some more of it in July as well. See see how it goes and improve upon what I've done. I am a perfectionist, so I was feeling a bit like, ah, oh, that was just you know the weighing scales. I didn't anticipate all this stuff. Why did I not anticipate it? But um, I'm glad that I've got a second chance to be able to have another go at it and, and see how it goes. So yeah, that's that's what I did. Thank you. Excellent, I think that's fascinating. Uh, I've been recently working with family learning, doing the same thing really, and uh, it's great being able to cook and share recipes, eat together, even if it's in a distanced way. How, how did you manage to do your videos, which I think is a wonderful idea because it can be repeated, watched many times. How did you manage with your camera? How, what was your setup? How have you managed to do that? I got my partner to help me. Yeah. Oh, he's <laughs> but my, a, he's my a colleague who's here today, Evni, she's got a selfie stick thing, which you can adjust to. So that's what I need to invest in, really, I think, long term. Excellent. Fascinating. There it is, look. There we go. Ah, OK. <laughs> Oh, thank you so much, Sarah. <laughs> and Are I you filming on the phone? Sorry, Chloe, are you filming on the phone? Using a yeah. phone? Yeah, yeah, just yeah, just use my mobile, yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Over yeah. to you, Chloe. That is so cool. Well, I know, Laurie, you've got to go um, in just yeah. a moment because you've got a session. Thank you so much for coming and just kind of like yeah. sweeping it into um, teaching. Um, so before you go, can we just have, um, can we all unmute ourselves and just give a round of applause to everyone? Rachel, Sarah, Eve and Laurie, thank you so much for sharing today. <laughs> I'm so inspired, Chloe. I, I'm, I'm so inspired. I've got my head is full of ideas. Um, Sarah shouldn't have any worries about that being, um, you know, less than the back. Gosh, that was just fantastic. Mm -hmm. I have so, so many ideas, Sarah, and I'm going to be in touch with you also. And all of you. I love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's I love lovely. Okay. Oh, yeah, I'm far too self-critical. I don't know about everybody else, but I'm just, yeah, so critical in my sessions. <laughs> Oh, you know what? I think we all are, aren't we? We all can be. But I liked, I was just tweeting. I, I tweeted for all of you. And I was just saying that I really appreciated like how reflective you were about your session. Um, you know, but we're all very reflective, aren't we? So yeah, and then, but I'm quite excited to uh, check your Twitter over the next few weeks. <laughs> you know, oh yeah, there'll be some bake photos on there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen more bacon. Sorry, Tinta. And what an, another example of just how fab the ESOL sector and ESOL practitioners are. And, and I think another round of applause to ourselves. Because all of us. Yeah. <laughs> it's all fab. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Oh, well, you know what? You've all done, look at the time. You've all done an amazing job working together. And I said, can we have 10 minutes at the end for questions? Look at that, it's 10 to 11. Amazing timekeeping. Thank you very, very much. Um, so I'm going to open the floor if anyone's got any questions. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be a bit naughty and go, if anyone's got any questions for Laurie, can we ask Laurie first? Because she's got to go for a session starting at 11. So has anyone got any questions about that amazing yeah. Mind I, I have got sorry I have got a question for Laurel. Laurel, I really loved your presentation because especially because you know um at the moment I try to create um animated PowerPoints. Yeah, and I just literally look at the YouTube, you know, trying to learn. Yes. And when I saw your PowerPoint, I was like, wow, this is a person I need. <laughs> So um, it just really quick questions, questions. Well, the first one is um, how can I, un for example, there is a picture and I want to ungroup the, some bits from this image. How can I do it? You can't do it with or all an pictures. Icon. Right, that's right. If you usually they call them like vector vectors, uh, yeah, yes, right. And you've got to have the full suite. Uh, we've got a limited suite. We only use a limited 2016 PowerPoint suite, and I can't ungroup. So I've literally had to draw around every piece oh, that okay. I can and make my own, create my own, really. Um, but yes, it doesn't work with all of them. I believe if you've got 365 subscription, if you've got the um, cloud yeah, version, I have you got can it. do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. And is it possible to have your email? So is it possible to stay in touch? Guess what I'm just typing right now. 
Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I've just checked my spelling. There you are. Brilliant. Yeah, thank please. you so much. Yeah, let's share. Oh. Let's help each other. Yeah. Thank you. On, on that, um, Laurel, because Olivia works in the secure estate, as she said before, um, in prison tutors are so restricted with what they can do in terms of digital skills and delivery. And PowerPoint is kind of like the go. Not all have got in interactive whiteboards, let's face it, or projectors. Yeah. So, so let's, let's say it's not there for everybody. But something like that really puts a new dimension into really using PowerPoint for something beneficial and not just sort of embedding IT for the sake of it by saying, well, I've got yes. PowerPoint running, you're actually doing something concrete with it. So I'm going to be in touch with you also, Laura. Please do. And remember, you can embed videos in there. Yeah. It's, it's great. It's great. It's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Really, thank you so much. You really made my day. Thank you very much. I'm, look at this. This is to hold my head in. Thank you <laughs> <laughs> very much. It's so strong at the moment. Thank you, Chloe. Thank you, colleagues. And I look forward to seeing and speaking to you all again. Bye bye, my dears. Bye bye. Thank you, Chloe. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs> All right, everyone, we've got a few more moments. Have you got any questions for Sarah or Eve? Or even Rachel, if you want to ask about infographics? <laughs> I think I had a question. I'll, 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 I'll get the ball rolling. Eve, it was about, um, I think actually you may have even answered it, but I'm just going to ask it out loud. And it was about um, grading on the book widgets. So is there a back end with uh, yeah. where it kind of, in it, where it brings all the marks together in a really nice way that is, you know, fantastic for something, say, a RAPA? Yes, there <laughs> yes, there is. Um, <laughs> yeah, and it makes it easy to do the manual grading as well. So you can bring up um, and it will bring it up question by question so you can mark all the students question ones and then tap across and mark all their question two so it's oh, kind of that's even better. go through and do your manual marking and then yes it all comes up on a little graphic at the bottom and it keeps as I say mine seem to be all linked in through the google classroom so it's all there I've got those sort of names and details and all their history of what grades they've got it's fantastic yeah brilliant thank you very very much yeah I'm kind of getting more and more excited about it the more you talk about it so I'm like I've just got my calculator out because I'm an English person not a maths person so I needed the calculator and um the cost of that book widget is 80 pence a week now that's amazingly cheap isn't it actually and I know we're often put off by spending money on programs because we think oh there must be a free version out there but that's you know, we spend more than that on a highlighter, don't we? You know, so I'm 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 going to subscribe later. There you go. Maybe you should ask them for some commission. You've got thirty days to play around with it and see if it suits you. Because well, there you go. Everyone does it. And I said it was quick to set up. It probably took me a while once I got the hang of how it all worked. Because things like the highlight the adjectives, you obviously have to set that up and tag the adjectives. So you've got right. to put a little sort of. Um, I can't remember little carry characters or something to tag them. So there, there's little bits in there. It depends kind of how tech you are and how quickly you sort of pick but, up. But then again, we, we often spend loads of time making a worksheet or something, don't we? Yeah. So it, it's just something that would be very easily adaptable and you've got it forever more, haven't you? And I can I imagine you can use, can you use them like as a template if you wanted to use a different... Yeah, you can duplicate one you've already made. Okay. And that. Um, you can I'm duplicate sold. questions. Okay. So once you've set up a question, like the adjective one, I could duplicate it and then just add in a different sentence. That kind Lovely. Of thing. I'm sold. Brilliant. Thank Probably you. shouldn't admit it, but I have done one like in the 15 minutes before my lesson was about to start. <laughs> Ready when I've been uh, panic planning. But that's great, though. Do you know what I mean? Knowing that that's how long it can take literally a few minutes and then you've got one. Do you know what I mean? I can't Brilliant. remember... Um, Someone introduced, it might have been Kate actually, shared um, the Answer Garden. I wanted mm. to try it here first sessions. Now I just love the fact that you can literally you just put a link in, type your question. You could do it in the session, not even the 15 minutes before you, you could literally do it in the session. And it, those kind of things are absolutely great, aren't they? If things go wrong or whatever, I don't know, you've lost, left your worksheets on the bus. I, I don't know, things happen, don't they? You know, I, I used to take, get three buses to where I work, so the, things could get lost. Um, so all that kind of stuff. And I love that you can recycle things because that's the big thing with tech stuff, isn't it? That it can take a lot of time to do stuff. Like for example, lorries, that interactive PowerPoint, it took them 
some time to do that. It really, really did. The thing is, that can be reused. And they looked at all the three different, all the different devices, and they spent a lot of time on it so that it can be used for all different learners with different devices. But it can be recycled and reused over and over in different departments, even, you know. So to say we've got a few more moments left. Does anyone have any questions about the Bake Off? <laughs> or the book widgets well, no, only just to say that Sarah's made me really hungry that's that's not helpful but there we go <laughs> we'll be sending you the next pictures first Rachel oh, <laughs> thank, you. The next thank you the make sure there's person. no chocolate in there because I'll be really angry <laughs> I was, I was going to say, but just on a practical point of view, I mean, what would you say stay clear of if you would you say biscuits is a good one to do, or or would you say there's a particular dish or something you'd avoid? Because <laughs> I've got loads of ideas about you know what you could make yeah. demonstrations. I, I think I wanted to steer clear it for me for like cooking as opposed to baking. Okay. <laughs> Um, but I think for, for me it was just more important um, they could they could access it all but also because I was teaching it I think I've taught it a couple of times in the same week I ended up with about 50 gingerbread men myself <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's why I decided to like right I'm not doing that next time <laughs> 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 so yeah think about what you might be left with at the end <laughs> very <laughs> practical <laughs> tip <laughs> <laughs> I love it practical tip <laughs> that's a really good point see I like gingerbread but I'm like after 50 of them perhaps not I'm not you know. I don't think I ate any of them I was just like I'm sick of looking at them now yeah I gave them away I think <laughs> brilliant 